Hello and welcome to part two of my Commodore PET 2001 rescue and restoration video. In this video I'm going to be completely disassembling the keyboard, getting all the keys cleaned, the plungers, the conductive pads, circuit board, springs, all the parts for the keyboard. Currently most of the keys work, some are not working 100%, have to push them a bunch or they're sticking couple examples are the A key, it sticks, the quote key sticks, or it doesn't work sometimes, W key, and there's a few others. So I'm going to go through and make sure that every key works 100% so I can get this thing up and going. Also in this video, I'm going to be doing a couple of upgrades as well. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my part two of my Commodore PET 2001 Rescue and Restoration. It's time for me to remove the 12 screws that secure the keyboard into the case. You can see those here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. I am also going to need to remove the uh, keyboard cable from here. Just unplug it because on this particular keyboard, the connector on here is soldered in. On some of the other pets I've seen there's just an edge connector and you could pull it off but on this one it's soldered to the board out of the wires and once I get this out I will show you that. I've got the keyboard out now and here is the connector I was telling you about. Uh, you can see it is it is an edge connector but Commodore, uh, on this particular keyboard, they soldered the wires directly to it, probably as a cost-saving measure, not to have another little uh, connector on there. So that's cool. Um, and then, yeah, here is the keyboard. It is really, really dusty. I blew it out uh, from the top when it was still in the case, but now I'm going to uh, blow all the dust off of this. And then I'm going to completely disassemble it and get it cleaned up. I'm also going to have to uh, remove a whole bunch of screws on the bottom of the keyboard. All these little screws here. And you see them all around the board. I'm also going to need to desolder these two wires. Those are for the uh, shift lock key. And then I can pull this board out and clean the contacts and everything underneath. Stay tuned. In case you are wondering, this is what a pet looks like with the keyboard removed. Now to remove all those tiny screws from the PCB on the bottom of the keyboard. I think before I completely disassemble the keyboard, I'm going to try cleaning the contacts on the PCB, as well as the uh, conductive pads on the bottom of the, the key plungers and stems, and give that a try and see if everything starts working good. And pending the results of that, we'll see how far I'm going to take this keyboard apart. So I've been dipping Q-tips in 99% uh, alcohol and cleaning the conductive tips. Look at this. Look at that black. So we're going to get a little more, a little more of my alcohol here. I'm just going around and you know, cleaning, cleaning them, wiping them off. Some of them have been pretty dirty. Yeah, it's not too shabby. A couple of them have been pretty bad already. So yeah, I'm going to continue doing this and cleaning these off and then move over and give the PCB a complete wash out. Yeah, look at that. Dirty. So yeah, I just grab some more Q-tips. I'm going to keep on keeping on and I'll check back with you in a few minutes. Well, the keyboard is working 100%. I completely disassembled the keyboard. I didn't shoot any video footage of all of that, but I did snap some pictures, so I'll insert those into the video right after this little clip. And then there'll be a clip after that that talks about more stuff that I've got going on with the machine. Man, this keyboard has been a pain in the butt. I've cleaned all the contacts. I've reassembled this thing. Still had some sticky keys, some keys that weren't working. 
And what's such a pain in the butt is to remove this PCB right here, you got to remove 19 small screws, like you would see on the bottom of a Commodore 64 or VIC-20 keyboard, which normally isn't a problem. But these screws are flathead, standard flathead, really small, 19 of them. And you got to take them all out, put them all back in, and I've done this now probably five or six times to finally get, I'm hoping the keyboard to work right. I had one key left that wasn't working at all once I cleaned it, which was the W key. So I've re-cleaned that, um, the conductive pads. I use this emery board on the softer side. You can see that black there. I basically ran it back and forth over and then cleaned it with alcohol, and now I'm gonna reassemble it and hope for the best. Wish me luck. Okay, here is the moment of truth to see if the W key, which was the last key I couldn't get working 100%, now works. So let's go down to the keyboard. Here is the W key right here. Here's the screen, let's start hitting it. Oh yeah, the W is working 100% and I'm hitting it a lot as you can hear. Nice. Finally, every key is working 100%. On to the rest of the video. Happy days, the keyboard works. Every key works, I've tested every key. Even the, the 10 key numeric pad, it's great. I cleaned the conductive pads, I cleaned the PCB for the keyboard, and put it back together, everything worked. I'm very happy. While I've got the machine open still, if you remember from part one, I talked about upgrading this from 16K to 32K, and that would be uh, adding some additional RAM chips here, and there's a, a little deal over here you gotta make an adjustment to. But then I got thinking, you know, I'd like to have this board remain as original as possible, but I'd still like to have the, the you know, the, the max memory of 32K. Well, in researching, I came across um, a board from a company called The Future Was 8-Bit, and I've ordered stuff from them in the past. I'll put a link in the description. But they make a board that will give you the option to use different basic, you know, basic 1, basic 2, basic 4, and the ability to upgrade a 32K memory. All you have to do with this board is remove your 6502, plug that board in from the Future Was 8-Bit, plug your CPU into that, adjust some dip switch settings, and you're off to the races. I have the board here in hand. Here's the board right here. I'll put a link in the description to the board. But yeah, it's really high quality, um, and I've already got it you know, set up for what I want, which is gonna be basic 4.0 and 32K RAM. So what I'm going to do next is grab my handy chip puller and off camera I'm going to remove the CPU, plug in the board, put the CPU in, turn it on and see what happens. Be right back. The board from the Future Was 8-Bit is now installed in my machine. You can see it installed right there. It was super easy. I did install the 6502 processor in the board before I stuck it into the pet. I didn't want a chance, you know, breaking something, so I did it on my workbench and got it all in there. Went in really easy. But yeah, so that's in there now. I'm going to uh, close the lid, like so. I'm gonna reach around the back, <laughs> reach around, turn it on. Basic 4.0, 32K memory. Awesome. The machine is maxed out with RAM and it's got the most up-to-date basic, as far as I know, for the PET machine. As mentioned, Commodore Basic 4.0 is rocking on my machine. 32K memory. What I'm going to do now is check out the game Space Invaders on my Commodore PET 2001. Alright, I got it ready to be loaded. I'm going to hit return. Loading. Going to run it. Comes up with this little message here. The PET 2001 does not have any sound, 
but this gives you a little diagram on how you can build a little kit to give the PET 2001 some sound, which is something that I want to do, and I'll save that for uh, a later video. But let's go ahead and uh, hit a key here, and you'll see the attract mode for Space Invaders. It looks really good. This machine is from the late 70s. Space Invaders is a game from the 70s. So it's kind of fitting to be uh, playing this game on the pet. Yeah, it looks really, really good. So there you go. Commodore Pet 2001 is up and running, doing good. And on that note, I'm going to end this video. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for more notifications of when future videos get uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.